Hey, it's Ted here. I'm out in my workshop and I've been uh, working online with a customer um, trying to solve a problem with the Gen 5 engine. It's kind of a weird one. It's an EVC engine and uh, he's done an engine swap 2016 to 2017. General Motors made some changes uh, within the Gen 5 during the early years there. Uh, they had a four wire a uh, fuel pressure temperature sensor on the rail and then they switched to just a fuel pressure sensor they took the temperature sensor out of it so now it's a three wire sensor um, i believe that the switch over that he has is from the four wire with the new engine as the three wire um, changed over the engine harness changed over uh, from a mechanical engine to an EVC engine. So it was not an EVC swap out. He took a mechanical engine and swapped it over to an EVC or backfitted it, should I say, to an EVC engine. Uh, long story short, uh, the engine didn't start, has a high fuel rail pressure with the key on engine not running. And I wanted to try to recreate this issue and see if it comes out about the same. Um, I believe from everything that he's done, he's done absolutely an amazing amount of things. He's taken the engine out of the boat, put it back in, changed the harness, changed virtually everything around trying to figure it out. Uh, my assumption is that the PCU has failed. That's what I've come up with. Uh, also, I talked to a, a Volvo rep and I believe that's what he came up with as well. Hopefully, Rolf, this works out for you, but I at least I wanted to put this video together for you uh, as well as um, other Volvo techs. And this also will apply to the General Motors, either Chevrolet or the GMC truck division for their 435362 engines. Uh, we have a Lab 53, a Lab 43 um, running engines. And this, I believe, the video I did with my students was to cover fuel rail pressure in uh, a lab environment, again, not in a vehicle. Um, a little video here I did in the lab is on the location of the sensor and what it looks like, and then the actual testing of it. So in the lab, what we did was we took uh, two quilters pins, solder them onto alligator clips. I make these for devices so I can short wires together. And then what we did was we opened the circuit, unplugged it, and then we shorted the signal wire to the 5 volt reference. Uh, I have a Diacom program recording here, and I'll show you what we found. I hope this helps. Um, so let's get started on the video portion. All right, so we're going to be looking at the actual back of this GXI engine. So again, it's in the lab. It's not in a rowboat, so it kind of helps. It's got all these extra connectors. But being a Gen 5 engine, I wanted to show you the connectors on the back of the engine here. So from backing out, this is the you know, back side of the engine, top of the flywheel housing, and just a little bit on the left side or port side here. You have your ground stud over here with the grounds on it. You want to always make sure those grounds are clean if you're having problems. So this is the fuel pressure sensor. And in this application, this is an early model engine, uh, 2014, 2016, I think it changed in 2017. This is a four wire sensor. So this has the actual pressure and temperature. So this is reading the rail pressure and the rail temperature. Uh, and this harness is a four wire GM harness plug. So this plugs into this and ultimately this is the Volvo Penna harness that plugs into this main harness. So this wire goes nowhere. It's one of these blanks in this plug. It does not connect to the Volvo side, it's blank. So it's not used, that's why there's four wires. So the temperature portion of the circuit does not work and I'll show you the color codes for that. We're gonna go look at the later model engine right now and I'll show you which is only got three wires. All right, here's a 5.3 and this again is an earlier model 5.3 and you can't tell by the model or serial number but again, if I come around the back of the engine and I'm looking at that sensor, there's four wires here and those four wires are painted over and here again is the Volvo connection that's going to connect within the harness to that. In the other room here I'm going to show you the later model engine with a three wire connector. So here is a teardown 4.3, a little later model and now what you're going to see is you're going to see that rail pressure sensor actually has only three wires. They discontinued GM, discontinued the four wire connector. So again 
you're only going to have three color code wires here. Now here's the other thing about this connector, and this is a good one to zoom in on. What you're going to see, and I think I've done this in an earlier video for Gen 5, is there's a white lock tab here. So if I push that tab in and lock it into the connector, then what you're going to see, it might be painted over, it might be red, but what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to pull that connector out. So let me zoom in again. There it's locked in. You're going to have to reach over there and just pull it out, snap it out. Now here it snap out. Now that that's pulled out, what you need to do is you need to squeeze in on it and you need to push it in. If you don't push it in, it won't come out. So what you got to do is squeeze in on the outside of the connector, push it in, and then it'll come out. All right, fuel pressure on a Gen 5 engine, short the 5 volt reference to the signal wire, and you get 4,062 PSI with the engine key on, engine off. I think it's tough because it's... Go for it. Nothing happens, right? And it's stuck at 4,062 PSI, correct? Yep. So, probably within the harness, that would tell me either the sensor. So, either the sensor is shorted to 5 volt reference, or internally, the harness is shorted to 5 volt reference, or inside the ECM, it's shorted to 5 volt reference. All right, so we have the Gen 5 engine. Ready to start, we've already had it running. Fuel rail pressure is about 177.4 PSI. Go ahead, Christian, start it up. Let me step on your foot. All right, so flares off, about five, 600 PSI at idle. That's totally normal, all right? Go ahead and shut it off. Now what we're gonna do, leave that, we're gonna leave the key on and we're gonna unplug the sensor. So go ahead and unplug the sensor. All right. And as soon as he unplugs that sensor, it goes to ZR zero PSI. So this is the fault if you have a low voltage, zero voltage feedback from the sensor. Go ahead and try to start it. Okay, an auto crank is about eight seconds. All right, so auto cranks about eight seconds. And one more thing, just to make sure you can see this, what would we look at, guys, for an engine parameter that would tell us that the engine won't start, but it's cranking? The RPMs. Right, so we could look at engine RPM up here, right? And what else could we look at? What else is rotating? Right, so we should see those two change. So go ahead and let it auto crank again, please. So we got RPM, and then we've got our camera card too, right? All right, so that tells us the engine's cranking at C and RPM, all right? So what are we gonna do next? We're all right, so we're gonna short the five volt reference to the signal wire here, and I wanna see what the fuel pressure changes to. Ah. There we go. You're almost there. 4,062.6 PSI engine is not cranking. It's not running. That is the default value if you have 5 volt on that signal wire. Go ahead and crank it. It might freeze a little. Right? We got our RPM again. We got our camera card. The fuel pressure is not changing. All right? Now plug it in. And let's see if that makes any difference. It won't make any difference at all. Sensor's plugged in. Yep. Okay, go ahead and crank it. No. Okay, go ahead and remove the jumper wires. And we're back to that standard fuel pressure, right? Go ahead and start it. Should start normally now. There it goes. Perfect. Next part's gonna be the cam phaser. This is gonna be the three values that you can see for 
a six liter or a gen 5 engine and that is camera tart actual that's the actual position of the cam sensor and what is reading that is that engine a v6 or is that a gen 5 engine if it's a gen, gen 5 engine then that engine does not have a flat top distributor right that's a coil near plug engine so that has to have a cam sensor right you also can see cam retard desired, right? And then the cam phase or duty cycle. The only engines that are gonna have this is a six liter or a gen five engine, all right? So what we're gonna do is start it up. So this is the actual position of the cam sensor. This is the cam retard desired, and there goes the duty cycle. So that's a cam phaser and that's being activated, right? The desired stays the same until you raise the RPM and then that cam actual will change slightly. So this is the actual position, this is where it wants to be and that's controlling that hydraulic pressure to that cam phaser. The only way to make a change is to raise the RPM, which I'll do. Okay, so I hope that helps you understand how the fuel rail pressure system works. It is a, an electric feed pump that feeds a high pressure mechanical pump that's driven by the camshaft. That fuel pressure is regulated by a proportioning valve that's located at the high pressure pump. And then it is monitored by a rail sensor. And the rail sensor is the question that we have uh, and in this video. So if you like the video, please hit that subscribe and like buttons. And I'll see you in the next one.